Yeah. And regardless, it'll be a ton of fun. So I'm excited for it for sure. Yeah, we're excited to host. I mean, we love the opportunity to be at home. Uh, a lot of our families will be here Thanksgiving weekend. We need the volleyball community to be around Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, in, in terms of us trying to knock off Creighton is something, you know, we, we've been striving for. Uh, it, certainly, you know, we talked to the seniors after we got the win at Wisconsin, and I was so happy to get to see them accomplish that in their career. Uh, and, and then I said that the Big East Championship would be the next piece, as I would love to see your senior class um, after coming so close in many occasions, uh, be able to achieve that and, and let those guys walk out of here on a high note. Thanks so much for watching the Big East Fall Sports Update. Enjoy the second half of your game.
test, test, test. Stand down there. I'll hand the microphone down to you. Once we get this cable on, on tank. Check, check. One, two, one, two. Can you hear me? Am I there?
Check one, two, one, two. Good afternoon, sports. Welcome to Xavier University. Xavier University, Ohio. Rubber baby buggy bumper. One, two, one, two. Don't be slamming those doors. No locked doors. Start going around doing ones in the bottom. You got it? Thank you. 
Should I start singing? La, la. <laughs> Good evening, sports fans, and welcome to Xavier, since Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio, for this Big East matchup. The Xavier Musketeers That's Xavier Musketeers and some other group of people. We got music. I think I'm done. I really feel foolish. Not. <laughs> Look, Mom, I'm on camera. Three, two, one. One, two, three.
20 going twice. 20. <laughs> That's okay. 20. 21. 20. 22. 30. 29. 28. Somebody asked if I hear him. 27. 26. That's one. 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. Other way, Iris. Brighter. Brighter, keep going. You're there. Good. Already. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Good? All right. Welcome into the Big East Fall Sports Update. I'm Megan Caffrey. There is so much to get into today with conference play gearing up for volleyball and women's soccer. We'll also recap a really exciting opening weekend for men's soccer. However, first, we'll start with field hockey, who also got into league action this past week as well. Two teams are in the top 15 in the nation's polls this week, with UConn climbing back up to number three after the Huskies' overtime win over then the sixth-ranked Princeton Tigers, and Liberty also checks in this week at number 13. Now, if you wanted action and excitement on your Friday night, BE football certainly did not disappoint. I was watching all of the games. There were nine...
Soccer Match Night on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Tonight from Cincinnati, Ohio, Xavier University and the Xavier Soccer Complex, the Marquette Golden Eagles visit the Xavier Musketeers. Welcome into a steamy night here in Cincinnati. I'm Mike Schmaltz. This is a rematch of last year's quarterfinal in which Marquette knocked out the Musketeers on penalty kicks as part of a big finish to that season. This season, Marquette has done well in the non-conference but wanted to do better, and they are riding the Skills of Jackson Wyman, a redshirt freshman in goal. He is in a tight battle for playing time with Cedric Stern, but Wyman has gone the entire distance, all seven matches this season with the Marquette Golden Eagles. A save percentage at 794, a goals against at .95, and he's had two shutouts so far. For the Xavier Musketeers, they have battled the best in the country. Started off this season with a victory over the Akron Zips, number two, number three in the country at the time and then drew with Kentucky on the road. They dropped their opener in the Big East, 3-1 last week to St. John's, and they're trying to level the slate as well. They did rebound earlier this week with an IUPUI victory. They are riding the skills of Samson Sergi in his senior season. Back-to-back -back nine goal season for Samson Sergi. He has five this season. He's tied for the Big East lead and the team lead with the freshman, Carson Henderlong. Coming up next, the Golden Eagles and the Xavier Musketeers on the Big East Digital Network. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. Back at the Xavier Soccer Complex for Big East Men's Soccer. First home match of the season here in the Big East for the Xavier Musketeers and the Marquette Golden Eagles battle on the road for the first time in conference play. These two teams have battled quite nicely recently. As we mentioned, the quarterfinal matchup last year in the Big East Championship. Xavier knocked out on penalty kicks, and the Musketeers dropped the regular season decision to Marquette it Valley Fields, two to one. Musketeers also coming up with some nice goalkeeping numbers this season from Matt Rosenberg. Rosenberg, a transfer in to this program, has come out with a solid record, four, two, and one for Xavier. A 1.21 goals against. The save percentage is at 80. And there you see Samson Sergi tied for the Big East lead in goals with five. Carson Henderlong right alongside there, number 12, also with five goals. He had the only goal in Xavier's road victory against IUPUI earlier this week. So the Musketeers and Golden Eagles about set to get after it. Here tonight, our officials, Mark Gorick, Gary Culbertson, Kyle Most, and Kahari Williams. First touch away, Marquette wearing the blue and gold. Musketeers in the home white and blue. And we play the beautiful game here on the Big East Digital Network. First touch out of the back. And here comes Marquette on the first attack. Marquette plays a little different style. It tries to push a progressive possession through the season. It tries to create mismatches, two on ones, three on twos. But they'll do it deep in their own zone as well in their defensive third. And that's where Louis Bennett gets a little criticism but it's an aggressive style of play and it's helped them attract some very dynamic forwards. Musketeers, strength of this program is the back line. Jacob Goodall back there, number 14, wears the captain's stripe for the Musketeers. This is the Xavier team, it's been a little bit under attack, but Matt Rosenberg in goal has made some dynamic and dramatic saves for the Musketeers this season and Xavier off to a four-victory start. 
but trying to even it up here in conference play. Xavier took a 1-0 lead up at St. John's in the conference opener. And so St. John's raced back to score to three. And the Musketeers couldn't recover. First corner of the night coming to Marquette. This is not what Marquette tries to do. Tries to play it more attacking in towards the middle of the field. Fine lanes, split defenders. And the Musketeers like to control the midfield. Andy Fleming with his signature four back backfield. Changed that up a little bit in a couple of these matches and have only played three back there. There's Jacob Goodall with the first contact and the first foul of the evening goes against Marquette. Musketeers will have a chance to clear. Last throws of summer here weather-wise. We start today in the low 90s here at the end of September. Had some cooler weather earlier in the week, but humidity returned today and yesterday. And this feels still like August, even though we are officially through fall. Good clearance right down the middle there for the Musketeers. And taking over at mid, Luca Purpa. Purpa back to the lineup. Had a 10-goal season his freshman year. And Purpa threw seven here for Marquette has only appeared in four. Had some nagging injuries, and Louis Bennett, the head coach, did not know if Purpa would be available tonight. It just kind of depended on how he felt. Purpa good enough to go here as Marquette looks for his third straight against the Musketeers. Clearance opportunity here for Marquette. Christian Albello, a Richard sophomore from Alexandria, Virginia. That is Samson Surjack country. Surjack from Ashburn, Virginia for the Musketeers. Marquette controls out of the back. Leo Villa forward and a good run forward here for Alex Mersberger. Turned nicely by the Musketeers out of the back and there's that signature defense for Andy Fleming coming to the full. Play there for Grant Dummler. Marquette with a quick turn. In space, Connor Alba. And Jacob Goodall sends it out for the Musketeers. He has been the anchor for Xavier in that backfield. Jacob Goodall, redshirt senior from Brandon, Florida. Logs some serious minutes in a very important position in Andy Fleming's system. See the speedy attack up front. Zach Wigner sends it in, header, and Rosenberg tested early. That ball drifted dangerously close to the brace. Connor Alba there with the offering. Alba is the second leading goal scorer here for Marquette. Two goals and an assist, five points, nine shots on the campaign. Out. Get a look here at the header attempt, and just off the top of the crossbar, but Matt Rosenberg there for the Musketeers. Rosenberg has made some spectacular saves credited with really keeping the Musketeers in a position to draw with Kentucky on the road. Xavier took a 2-0 lead in that match and then saw Kentucky come back in the second half to even it up, but Rosenberg was spectacular. Battle for control with me. That's Cameron Bell for the Musketeers trying to get it forward for Samson Sergei. And Xavier will play it in here with Ryan Bellavance. Bellavance, a huge addition here to the Musketeers, transferred in from Colgate. Bellavance in his Richard senior season. He's 6'2. He's had some NCAA tournament experience, and Xavier losing some experience on that. Defensive back line was more than happy to offer Ryan Bellavance a spot on this year's roster. And between him and Goodall, substitutes for some of the injuries the Musketeers have had disrupt their rotation, as have the Marquette Golden Eagles. Louis Bennett saying some of the injuries to Marquette really wiped out all the work they had done in the spring and the preseason with some of the rotations. And they're finding out really right about now in the season who's going to be able to continue and contribute to this Marquette attack. Contributing here, Luca Cardamone. 
Cardamone sends that one well wide. And Xavier, a chance to clear. Marquette comes off a nice victory in the Big Ten at Wisconsin 2 0. Lost that opener in the Big East to Creighton. 1 0 at Creighton. Then lost the Derby, a heated rivalry with Wisconsin Milwaukee 2 1. Louis Bennett, the former head coach at Wisconsin Milwaukee. Several Horizon League championships and a handful of NCAA tournaments with the Panthers. Attack cut off there by Dumbler. That was almost a dangerous run out for Connor Alba. Ball cycles across here for Marquette. Manuel Chukai. Chukai was a little deeper in the rotation here for Marquette to start this season. Played some significant minutes the past couple of years and now going to be a major contributor. Missed a connection there in the attacking half to Luca Purpa. We'll see how Purpa's moving. Don't know the extent of the injuries. No, they weren't major. But no, they were nagging enough to keep him out of some matches earlier this season. Ball sent forward there by Chukai. Dunward there to greet it for the Musketeers. Sent in, controlled there by Leo Villa. Chukai controls out of the back, and you see the numbers forward very quickly for Marquette. Xavier's going to want to force Marquette wide today. Marquette does not like to play that way. What Louis Bennett called the chip and charge game, he's not a fan. Villa controls out of the back. This is Mersberger centering in space. Salmara. Connor Alba trying to work his way through traffic. Working on Derek Odo and ball will drift through the defense. And possession swings back to the Musketeers. A very welcome breeze beginning to build here at the Xavier Soccer Complex on a very humid night. Xavier so far this season has not given up a goal in the first period. They're outscoring the opponents 8-0 in the first, but being outscored 8-5 in the second. And that could be some nice adjustments by opponents or perhaps some questions to the Musketeers conditioning. And Xavier's still trying to build a little bit of chemistry with some new rotations. Set piece opportunity here for Luca Purpa. Hey, one and three. One and three. That's good. That's good. Get free. Come on, Leo. Left footer. Served head on, chipped in front. Beautiful play by the Musketeers. And some contact low, but Xavier comes up with a nice offering there from Balavance, the veteran defender. Anthony Fleming with a lot of praise for this back line. Very similar approach to an offensive line in football. He loves the way Matt Rosenberg's been able to organize and goal for Xavier. So it was a quick ball forward there for Samson Surgeon. He was trying to work with Carson Hinderlong. Two leading scorers for the Musketeers, each with five goals. And a reset here for Derek Odom. Odom works with Sean Wilson in the holding mid. Two excellent holding midfielders for the Musketeers. Wilson, the transfer in from North Carolina. He was able to get to a college cup with the Tar Heels. Two shots so far for the Golden Eagles, none for the Musketeers. Shots an interesting scenario as well. Marquette out shooting opponents 48-39 in the first, but being outshot 58-44 in the second. Marquette also being outscored in the second, 5-2. Mentioned those couple of numbers to Louis Bennett. Didn't quite realize the shot differential for Marquette.
Good ball played in space here for Merzberger. Merzberger plays back. Leo Villa. Now Chukai. Little chip there for Purpa. Strong run down the side and physical contact as Dunmore came over and collided. No whistle there on this near touchline. Merzberger, the recipient of the contact, but a throw in here in the attacking third. Xavier being able to force Marquette towards the touchlines, and that's an advantage, Musketeers. Excellent turn there by Jacob Bernson, the redshirt freshman. 5'11", 170 out of O'Fallon, Missouri for the Musketeers. Opportunity here for Josh Cohen, and Cohen sends it on, and Rosenberg right there for Xavier. Great look there at Matt Rosenberg. Rosenberg got into a numbers game down in Central Florida. Looking for a chance to go and contacted the Musketeers. Andy Fleming made the phone call down to the coaching staff and said, hey, this Matt Rosenberger, young man, just wins. Andy Fleming. All he needed to hear. And Matt Rosenberger, Musketeer. Doing some great work here for Xavier. 669 minutes so far. The goals against it a 1.21, 36 saves for Rosenberg. Dunmore able to kick it out of the back. Contact here in mid. Musketeer onto the pitch. Here's Sampson Sergi. Sergi preseason All Big East, a second team All Big East player last year. Musketeers have been in some physical matchups, one in particular with Memphis. That match yielded a very troubling injury to Felix Botangan, one of the Musketeer midfielders, as that ball knocked out of the box down there by Leo Villa. And Marquette able to clear. That scary moment with Felix Botangan was off a set piece. He was charging towards the far post, caught a boot in the head, went down, needed medical attention for 30 minutes, left the complex in an ambulance and visibly shook both sides. Musketeers actually rescheduled that game with IUPUI that was due up a couple days later, and they played that one earlier this week on Tuesday. Here's Derek Odom, and Odom trying to fire, found the back boot of Leo Villa. Down for Marquette is Alex Samara. Samara's been a big piece so far. Burnson across, and that one headed away easily by Emmanuel Chuka. And up and off the pitch now is Alex Samara. Louis Benison Samara, the type of player in the midfield. Quite quiet, but as he likes to say, tightens the nuts and bolts for the operation. Good throw in there for Cameron Bell. Sergi was after it in the air for the Musketeers. He was denied. Well played out by Lucas Sunasan. Also having a very solid start here for Marquette. Sunasan with a goal. Off 12 shots, five of them on frame. Ball into the attacking half for the Musketeers. In our 15th minute. Here at the Xavier Soccer Complex. Simpson Sergi working his way through traffic. Carson Henderlong trailing. Ball back for Taylor Crow, another big defender for the Musketeers. 6'1, 180 out of Carmel, Indiana. Crow trying to work forward. Musketeers able to maintain the possession. That's Bellavance out of the back. He's tripped up. Now Cameron Bell sweeps in to save possession for Xavier. Jacob Goodall surveys. Pressure forward here for Luca Purpa. Purpa 1v1 would be a big challenge for Matt Rosenberg. Salmaran comes up with a contact there on Derek Odom. 
at mid. Oda has been a huge piece at the midfield from Nottingham, England, and the Gelding School. Musketeers have qualified for the Big East Championship Tournament each of their seasons in the Big East since 2013. Ball played forward and Jacob Bernson can't catch up to it. Andy Fleming with a good idea call from his sideline. Jackson Wyman plays it out for Marquette. Bellavance there to flick away for the Musketeers and save the possession. Battle for possession at mid. Ball swing across for Merzberger. Great angle there by Dumbler. Cuts off any access for Connor Alba. And a reset here for the Musketeers. There's Carson Henderlong. Gaining some contact from Merzberger and picks up the foul. Henderlong, part of a fantastic recruiting class here for Andy Fleming. It was rated number seven in the country this season. And Henderlong, a big piece of that. Bellavance, also a part of that. Xavier did not get a big striker out of Norway who opted for a professional contract, but he was on his way here to play for the Musketeers as well. They even add to the threat that Xavier has. Musketeers have been able to manage a pretty solid roster with the redshirt process. Eight of 11 in the starting lineup has at least had one redshirt a year here with Xavier. This is Odom showing some technical ability at mid over for Wilson. Andy Fleming will tell you, Sean Wilson, the Best recruit he never visited. Wilson sought them out as he was looking for a new situation out of North Carolina. A little bit of physical play boring forward and almost a rush forward there for Marquette, but Bellavance over to take another strong angle for the Musketeers. It's Patrick Segrist there. On that last charge, Segrist with three assists. The assist leader for these Golden Eagles. It's not yet registered a goal to see him with the captain's band. So Jackson Wyman in goal tonight for Marquette. Yet to be heavily tested. We've seen Xavier's keeper Matt Rosenberg have to make a couple of plays. See, 3-1 shot advantage for the Golden Eagles. Twentieth minute here in Cincinnati. Good ball wide for Segrist. Centering play there for Purpa who had to play out as the Musketeers pressure forward. Bernston and Merzberger get tangled up again. Good play across for Connor Alba. Alba gains some relief, but the strike just a bit off there for Luca Purpa. Ball played to the Xavier half, knocked down nicely. In space by Salmarat. Got it back now for Wyman. Uh, 
Luca Perper from Wind Lake, Wisconsin, Muskego High School. He is a senior midfielder. When healthy, one of the most potent attackers in the Big East. Connor Alba plays back. Merzberger there again. Purple was the Big East freshman of the year with that 10 goal season in 2016. Good play to mid. Excellent stab forward in Purpa in space. There you see a quick chip forward and almost a chance for Lucas Sunasan. Sunasan, a sophomore from Talby, Sweden. Ball sent out and reset here for Marquette. In space again, and again, they find Luca Purpa has to deal off for Merzberger. The ball knocked down by Bernson for the Musketeers. Reset to the defensive half. Samson Sergi trying to press the issue there for the Musketeers, and they do force it back to Jackson Wyman. Mention that. Tight battle in goal. Jackson Wyman and Cedric Stern. Stern is from Germany. And Louis Bennett basically said he'd be comfortable playing either goaltender should the situation warrant. Just that Jackson Wyman a little quicker to pick up the system and the decision making that he'd like to see. And that's why Wyman has started all eight matches so far this season. But a good look there at Derek Odom for the Musketeers. Xavier set the restart here. A little Big East contact there at midfield. Zach Wagner on the mark there for Marquette. Good all trying to position Xavier for the attack. Samson Sergi the first touch. Sergi sends it wide. Bellavance into the corner. Quick mark over there by Josh Cohen for Marquette. Ball back out. Wilson sends it across. Sampson Sergi with a chip, and that one off the crossbar. Did not cross the line, and will play on. Cameron Bell fires. Sergi fires again. Sergi stays after it for the Musketeers, and Xavier so close to taking the 1-0 lead, and Sampson Sergi rang the crossbar. Credit to the... Marquette for just jamming the box there, making it difficult for the Musketeers to gain clean shots off the rebound. Sampson Sergi looking for his sixth of the season, nearly had it. As that ball deflected down off the crossbar. You see how dangerous Sergi can be in space. One touch, he was able to use the big frame. As Sergi stands in there at 6'2", 175. Important match for both these teams tonight, although very early in this conference season, but both at 0-1. And folks, you only have nine chances against your conference opponents before you get to the tournament. Top six again advance. Opening games will be played at the higher seed sites. As Sergi picks up the foul there, admitting a restart for the Musketeers, and now a little bit of extracurricular behind the play is Jacob Goodall into it a little bit with Alan Salmeron. So the Swede and the Floridian get into it. You see Sergi there just picked it off the back heel, almost in disbelief that it couldn't go in. And look how close that was. So you saw the net vibrate. And credit Jackson Wyman for some poise there and goal under fire. Now an officials conference here at mid. And we may be going to a review here in Cincinnati. So we'll take a look at the first review of this Big East season. Video review into play. 
Video reviews can be summoned up for contact just to see if there was any extra intent. And this officiating staff going to take a look at it. Do not want anything to get out of hand. But the Big East, of course, known for the physical play. Let's get a good look there at Louis Bennett for Marquette. Bennett in his 14th season. Englishman has done a fantastic job. Also had his son, Louis Bennett, the second play in the program, and he moved on to a solid professional career. So we're under review here on a steamy night in Cincinnati late in September. Second conference match for each of these teams. It's the home conference opener for the Xavier Musketeers. And Marquette on the road for the first time in conference. They dropped their opening game for right here. the conference season. And our officials now visiting with us up at our broadcast position. And we'll take a look. And you see back it up Jacob right Goodall. Keep going before he goes down. Before he goes down. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Review continues, and we've got the bird's eye view of it in the catbird seat. And they'll go back to just before the ball was sent across mid. And you see the contact going down and no call. So review will go in the favor of the Xavier Musketeers. As you saw that little early contact with the pitch there by Alan Salmeron. Nice idea to try to sell it. That was Mark Gorick there on a review. He's out there with Gary Culbertson, Kyle Most, and Kahari Williams, the alternate here on the near touch. So no harm, no foul. There was a little contact, however, after that little play. And Jacob Goodall, the Musketeer captain, going to get the explanation. And we will press on here in Cincinnati. Four shots apiece now for both teams. Marquette's had one on goal, the Musketeers. I don't know how you don't credit the shot from Samson Sergi as being on goal as it hit the crossbar. Probably change that stat here as we get updated. In our 26 minute, good long ball there for Goodall, but nobody home for the Musketeers and an easy clearance after Luca Purpa. They were going to keep it alive, however, and restart the attack. Sergi trying to stay on. This is Carson Henderlong, the freshman. Henderlong sends it to the near post and diving. Wyman able to make the save. So you get a good look there. And a heads up play from Wyman, his first real test of the night. And Xavier starting to solve the defensive puzzle here for Marquette. Good run in there for Segrist, and he's denied by Cameron Bell playing forward. So now you see Henderlong and Sampson Sergi, the two attackers, trying to press the issue forward, and Burnson up now. Maybe Marquette a bit frustrated as they love to work the middle of the pitch. Xavier hasn't made it easy here in this segment. Ball swings back and deep possessed at mid. Carson Henderlong for the Musketeers. On the run, has Sergi wide. Sergi puts a good boot on it, low, and Wyman able to come up and make the play. So three straight chests now for Jackson Wyman. He's come up solid for Louis Bennett and the Golden Eagles. Six shots now for the Musketeers. Xavier, again, has not given up a goal in the first so far this season. 28th minute here in Cincinnati, and Marquette working the gears out of the back. Leo Villa, good communication there with Wyman. Ball across now, Segrist. 
Crawl there to cut it off for Xavier momentarily, and then gets a little bit of help from his friend Jacob Goodall out of the back. Good ball to mid for Sergi. Turn there for Henderlong, and he's depossessed nicely and smoothly from the back by Salmara. Run for Connor Alba. Alba draws the double team. And that ball sent to the back. So Marquette finding some tough sledding through this musketeer back line. And defensive set. That is Odom trying to get it out of the back. Big boot. And that ball sails across. Did catch part of the crossbar. But a big blast there for Marquette and Lucas Sunasa. Connor Haskell on now for the Musketeers. Haskell is a redshirt freshman, a defender from Medfield, Massachusetts. So another one of those red shirts as Burnson comes off. Now for Xavier, they get a great look. And Matt Rosenberg. A big part of any stretch the Musketeers can put together this season. Xavier had an excellent start to this campaign. Started out 3-1-1. One one. The two losses came in succession for the Musketeers. That double overtime loss to Memphis. So that jarring injury to Felix Botengen. And then last week, St. John's does the number on the Musketeers. Big time environment up there. For the Red Storm, it's Red Storm number nine in the country. Georgetown also its usual place in the top five in the country. Marquette brings Gabe Cash onto the field. Cash, another one battling with a little bit of injury, a redshirt freshman. Marquette resets out of the back. Dashing to mid, Connor Alba. Wilson on the mark there for the Musketeers. Here's Cash. One on one near side there with Connor Haskell. Albello. Leaves it up for Alba. And again, the Musketeers force it out. Big blast there for Segrist off the right side. Zebra there to deny. Solid collection there mid by Chukai, and Marquette resets. Cash again for Alba. Salmoran sends it across, trying to connect over there with Josh Cohen. Cohen ridden off the ball and forced to give it up to mid. Reset again for Chukai. Marquette probes, looking for the mismatch opportunity. Ball sent into space, Crawl gonna clean it up. A little bit of back pressure there by Sunasan. Crawl forces it out, and that'll force a possession here for Marquette. It's Chukai there to clean it up. Got there before Carson Henderlong, the talented Musketeer freshman. In space, Odom cleans it up after he chipped there from Sergi. And Dummler sends it out of the back, trying to get Henderlong forward. He's a mid four Golden Eagles, and possession back to Marquette. Albello. Now Segris going one on one, far side there. It's Cameron Bell there for the Musketeers. And again, the early momentum in the formation cut off by the Musketeers. So Xavier tightening up the defensive range. 31st minute here in Cincinnati. Marquette took both contests last year, one in the regular season in Milwaukee. And one on penalty kicks in the quarters of the Big East Championship. Dangerous ball across, and it was punched away there by the Musketeers. On the spot there for Xavier was Connor Haskell. 
Ball sent across the touchline. It'll be a throw in here, attacking third. Cash going to work, trying to make a connection back to the corner. Nobody home there. Salon Salmaran was in the area. Xavier wards off yet another attack. Restart here for the Musketeers and Rosenberg. Sent across the touchline. Musketeers back in the attacking half. Marquette leads the series 6 3 and 1. Last five, the teams are level at 2 2 and 1. Series is at 2 and 2 here in Cincinnati. No score yet. Both teams have had opportunities. The Musketeers maybe with the most dangerous as Samson Sergi knocked it off the bottom of the crossbar. Did not touch the line and a chance for the Musketeers denied. Shots all even here at six. Luca Purpa going to come off and onto the pitch. Christian Marquez, a freshman at a Berwyn, Illinois. So Luca Purpa comes through his first test after some nagging injuries in good form. Promising sign there for the Golden Eagles. Last year Marquette started out three, six, and two. They went four, two, and two down the stretch. And Louis Bennett engineered victories over Xavier and Creighton in the Big East Championship. And Said so that probably, that run that he made with his Golden Eagles limited the Big East offering in the NCAA championship to just one. That was a Georgetown Hoyas. Said his team just doing his job, didn't really want to play the role of the spoiler, but really carried over some of that momentum and swagger into this season, a little more confidence and a little more knowledge of the system as his team came back for the spring. Louis Bennett says he loves coaching in this conference, loves the competition, some of the parity. Also likes the way the opposing coaches cheer for each other when they're not playing each other. So in the non-conference, everybody a fan of a solid non-conference victory helps when we get into conference play and people start knocking people off. The RPI really not affected all that much. And Louis Bennett can see a time where there are four or five teams from the Big East in the NCAA tournament been what he terms a charter of the league. And Xavier, of course, had done its part so far this season with some nationally ranked matchups, in particular the big season opener over number two, number three, Akron, last year's national finalist. So Dummer with a throw in there for the Musketeers. Ball swings back and Segris tracks it for Marquette. 35th minute here in Cincinnati. Shots all even at six. Two on frame for the Musketeers. One on frame for Marquette. Good play there for Christian Marquez in space. And they'll feed Seekers to gain far side. Cameron Bell there defensively for Xavier. Good ball to the middle. Nice technical ability by Josh Cohen. Cohen's drawn some attention. Cameron Bell sends that out. Cameron Bell with some great speed for the Musketeers. Andy Fleming refers to him as the gazelle. Wants to see a little more strength out of Cameron Bell. And he is seeing that here. It's Cameron Bell, a redshirt sophomore. A.J. Franklin out of the pitch now for Marquette. Redshirt freshman, 175 pounds out of Streamwood, Illinois. Josh Cohen comes off. He'll gain a rest down the stretch here in our 38th minute. Solid battle here on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Mike Schmaltz with you from Cincinnati. Very steamy night tonight. 
Ball knocked away by Bellavance as Seegers put another powerful charge into it. Quick restart. And that's Christian Marquez with the first touch, and he has to play back. Solid play out there by Noah Baffo for the Musketeers. He's a freshman and a couple assists in an earlier game against Eastern Illinois. And a true freshman here for Andy Fleming. So Baffo, part of that big recruiting class, one of the best Xavier's ever had here. You get minutes for Andy Fleming as a freshman, you have earned them. Especially if you're getting them on the back line. Long ball set across, dangerous chance here. That ball headed away and a beautiful play by Taylor Crawl to save a goal for the Musketeers. Great play in space on the far post. That looked like A.J. Franklin with the target and Taylor Crawl. A last minute effort for the Musketeers. See the high ball across that was Franklin and hit ball was headed for the left corner of the goal and Taylor Crawl came over and Made the save, and that's why Andy Fleming has big love for his back line. Taylor Kroll comes up huge. That ball played off the back of Sampson Sergi. That was another strong strike out of the corner. So Marquette now gaining the attacking momentum. Good all in space, and he goes into the air depleted. Manuel Chukai got a little too much of the body there of Jacob Goodall and the Musketeers able to ward off this attack. See Goodall into the air first and Chukai just got his backside under the backside of Jacob Goodall and Goodall down to the pitch. So Matt Rosenberg with some welcome relief here for the Musketeers. 40th minute here in Cincinnati. Bill plays forward. No chance there for Sampson Sergi as Manuel Chukai there. Musketeers press forward with Cameron Bell. Noah Baffo. Baffo in space. Forms the attack. The dangerous Sergi in front. Has help here from Haskell. Ball sent across. Chipped out. Big rebound shot up top from Cameron Bell as well over the mark. Great defensive play. This time by the Marquette backfield. That looked like Lucas Sunasan in there to guide that ball out. So let's make that manual Chukai with that touch. Helping out his keeper, Jackson Wyman. Teams continue to trade offensive surges. Good run into the corner there for Christian Marquez. Musketeers able to chip away. Odom with some good speed after it kept alive in the attacking half by Albello. Segrist works in the corner. In space, Alba. Ball sent across, headed away. That was good all there for the Musketeers. Long ball out just to get some relief here and for Xavier, no numbers forward. But Baffo will see if he can operate. It's Manuel Chukai works in space. No, stay AJ, stay. Stay AJ. Cash forward, Dumbler there for the Musketeers. Cash will press the issue and launch that one well across the goal line into the corner. See if you're trying to hold yet another opponent scoreless in the first. This will be the eighth consecutive contest. See if you're not surrendered a goal in the opening 45 if this holds up. Seven shots apiece. Both teams with two shots on frame. Nine fouls for Marquette, three for the Musketeers. Marquette leads in corners 2-0. That's a, really a good sign for Xavier as Marquette does not want to play that outside in game. They want to send it right up the middle. Ball sent out by Goodall. Flicked on, crawl there for the Musketeers. Relief for Odom, now Cameron Bell. 
Ball played into the attacking half, well ahead of Sampson Sergian. It'll be an easy turn here for Leo Villa. Villa working with Chukai out of the back. Bafo presses forward for the Musketeers. Seeger is far side, tracked there by Cameron Bell. In space and a good win of possession. Christian Marquez. Nice little battle there with Derek Odom for the Musketeers. Ball again played on and played out. Chukai cycles back to Samara. 45th minute here in Cincinnati. Well played first half by both sides. Both sides had threats turned away. Xavier perhaps with the most dangerous is Samson Sergi had one ricochet off the crossbar. Good ball in. Here's Buffo for the Musketeers. Handed on side, shifted back. Here's Haskell. Haskell trying to save the possession. Dumbler across to press the issue and a nice slide out by Marquette. It was A.J. Franklin. It's the Musketeers hovering dangerously atop the box. See our time counting down here. 17 seconds, and Xavier will have one more chance to break this scoreless tie. Long ball in. Sergi into the air, chips it over, and again, Seagrist able to clear it away for Marquette. Three seconds. Dumbler going to send it into the air. That ball's going to fall harmlessly in front of Jackson Wyman, and at the break, a well played Big East contest between the Xavier Musketeers and the Marquette Golden Eagles, all even. Nil nil. Both teams with seven shots apiece and two on frame. We'll take a break here from Cincinnati. Be back with more on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Mike Smalls back with you on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Well played first half between the Marquette Golden Eagles and the Xavier Musketeers ends in a nil-nil draw, all even in shots, all even in shots on frame. Time now for our Big East update. Let's send it to Megan Caffrey at the Big East headquarters. 
Welcome into the Big East Fall Sports Update. I'm Megan Caffrey. There is so much to get into today with conference play gearing up for volleyball and women's soccer. We'll also recap a really exciting opening weekend for men's soccer. However, first, we'll start with field hockey, who also got into league action this past week as well. Two teams are in the top 15 in the nation's polls this week, with UConn climbing back up to number three after the Huskies' overtime win over then the sixth-ranked Princeton Tigers, and Liberty also checks in this week at number 13. Now, if you wanted action and excitement on your Friday night, BE football certainly did not disappoint. I was watching all of the games. There were nine goals in five matches. Excitement all over the place as we take a look here at the big winners of the weekend. St. John's, Georgetown, Providence, and Creighton all coming out on top. Now let's take a look closer at the top 20 showdown that was in Queens on Friday night. Belson Stadium was absolutely rocking. They had a record crowd, the most since 2014. The Johnnies were trailing 1-0 at the half, and then they came back scoring all three goals in the second as they took the 3-1 victory over Xavier. St. John's first win over a ranked opponent this season. Two of St. John's goals coming from Nico Petridis. Now, two of the teams who did lose in their Big East openers were able to bounce back as Marquette and Butler capped off a 7-2 non-conference week for the Big East with the Golden Eagles beating Wisconsin and then Butler taking on the fifth-ranked Indiana Hoosiers at the Selleck Bowl. The Dogs win 2-1. Brandon Gould and Jack Hayward come up with the goals. But the real story here was Gabriel Jurgi in net. He had five saves on the night, including this huge one right here early in the 17th minute. On this penalty kick, he said, nope, not getting in. And the Dogs hand Indiana their first loss of the season. And get this, this was Indiana's only their fifth non-conference loss in the last six years. So a huge feather in the cap for the Bulldogs as they advance to 4-3 and three on the season. And as we look ahead to conference play this week, the Bulldogs have another top 10 opponent with the ninth ranked St. John's Red Storm. Now let's turn to women's soccer. Women's soccer conference play starts up this weekend. However, before we go forward, let's take a look back at some of the really big non-conference wins that the Big East put up. With Villanova knocking off 24th ranked LSU, DePaul beating number 11 Kansas, and then Georgetown, who was ranked 15th at the time, they took down the 23rd ranked West Virginia squad. Now let's look here at all the matchups that we have to get into action this week. And then on Sunday, Xavier takes on Villanova. Musketeers also had a great non-conference performance as I sat down with senior forward Samantha Dewey and asked how her team is going to keep that momentum riding into conference play. The Xavier Musketeers wrap up their non-conference slate with a six-match unbeaten streak, their longest since 2013, as I now welcome in the Big East Preseason Offensive Player of the Year, Samantha Dewey. Samantha, how was your team so successful through the non-conference this year? I think that well, we set some goals before the season, and um, one of those goals was to um, do well in our uh, non-conference, and I think that we played some teams that we maybe not seen before and um, that gave us a good challenge. And I think throughout the non-conference uh, season, we, we were able to um, learn from the things that we didn't necessarily um, do well. Um, we gave up some goals at the beginning um, of the season, so we, we wanted to fix that. And I think um, the five straight shutouts were um, a testament to that. Last season, your team finished a program best fourth in the Big East. So what specifically are the Musketeers building off of this season that you've seen already through the non-conference? I think that we have this togetherness that we've really just um, built in our program. And um, the more together that we play, um, the better we play. And so I think just building that team camaraderie and finding that collective energy, um, building into the Big East. And then obviously, the Big East is a tough conference, um, one of the best in the country. And so um, if you want to you want to be the best, you got to compete against the best. And so um, that's kind of our motto, um, continuing to build on a program that wasn't super successful when we first got here. And um, now to see where we are and see the growth is just really rewarding and, and just super cool to be a part of. And conference play kicks up this weekend as your team will take on Villanova on the road. Sam, your team is 5-1-1 one and one away from home this year. How have you guys become road warriors? Yeah, uh, I think that was part of um, 
the myth behind the madness that the uh, the coaches really were preaching to us beforehand. Like we're gonna have a tough non-conference slate, and not only is it gonna be tough, like we're playing on the road. You guys are gonna be on the bus a lot, but I think we've really embraced those challenges and um, made it our own. Like just coming together on the bus, coming together on trips, and really being intentional about um, getting to know your teammates, um, getting to know what makes them you know, tick, and I think that we've really put it together on the road and um, done what we've needed to do and get to get wins. Samantha Dewey, thank you so much for joining me. She will be carb loading before her game on Sunday against Villanova at 1 o'clock. You can catch that on the Big East Digital Network. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much for having me. Now let's check in with John Fanta, who's got more on Big East women's volleyball as they get into conference play. Thanks, Megan. There's two top 15 teams in the nation out of Big East volleyball. Creighton, who is the reigning conference champion, they're ranked number 14. And it's the Marquette Golden Eagles, a program first in the top 10. They come in at number 10 this week, and they swept away Butler in their conference opener behind Allie Barber, who had 13 kills. In other Big East volleyball action, Xavier. They rally past DePaul in a five-set thriller. And coming up this weekend, 14th-ranked Creighton Blue Jays, they'll welcome in Villanova. That's 8 Eastern time Friday night on the Big East Digital Network. Going back to Marquette, a number 10 ranking nationally. And for this Golden Eagles squad, they know they've achieved a lot. Best start since 1997. But there's a greater goal in mind. We've been knocking accomplishments down left and right and I think that that's huge for us and I think that one that I know we really want as a group is the Big East title and I think that we haven't won it since I've been here and and I it would be a great way to close out an incredible list of accomplishments and I think that it's huge to have it here I mean your home court advantage you know the facility you're not sleeping in a hotel you have your own crowd like it's huge it's massive and I think that it's going to be super beneficial for us and regardless it'll be a ton of fun so I'm excited for it for sure. Yeah, we're excited to host. I mean, we love the opportunity to be at home. Uh, a lot of our families will be here Thanksgiving weekend. We need the volleyball community to be around Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, in, in terms of us trying to knock off Creighton is something, you know, we, we've been striving for. Uh, it, it certainly, you know, we talked to the seniors after we got the win at Wisconsin, and I was so happy to get to see them accomplish that in their career. Uh, and, and then I said the, the Big East Championship would be the next piece, is I would love to see your senior class um, after coming so close in many occasions, uh, be able to achieve that and, and let those guys walk out of here on a high note. Thanks so much for watching the Big East Fall Sports Update. Enjoy the second half of your game. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference.
Savior. Welcome back to the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi in Cincinnati. The Marquette Golden Eagles and the Xavier Musketeers all even as we approach the second 45. We are joined now by Nick Haglin. Nick is a graduate of Lakota West High School here in Cincinnati. You came to Xavier. You were an All-American here at some conference championships. You were able to be the defensive player of the year in both the Atlantic 10 and then the next year in the Big East. Mm -hmm. And now a championship with Toronto mm -hmm. FC. You were the number 10 overall pick for Toronto, won the championship at 17, now able to come back here and play MLS in Cincinnati. If there's a dream to be lived in the game, <laughs> you're living a dream. And, oh, by the way, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame here, Xavier, right. in the next class in January. That's right. That's just talk right. about the experience so far and just what you've been, this incredible ride you've been on. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a crazy journey, to be honest. I when I, came to, when I came to Xavier, I didn't think I was very good at soccer, and I was just like, I love soccer, I want to play soccer. And kind of when Andy Fleming took over and the group, uh, the group of freshmen that I was with, my dreams kind of just came a reality. I really, uh, you know, I just played one game at a time and things just kind of progressed and it's been an incredible journey for, for myself and I'm just really blessed and thankful for all the coaches and players that I've been with and my family um, that have supported me along the way. Talk a little bit about the evolution of this program and, and what you've seen, how this program has changed since it's gone to the Big East. You had some great success in the Atlantic mm -hmm. 10, then you were able to get into that inaugural season in the Big East and, and how have you seen it grow from there? Yeah, I mean, uh, you're you're getting more recognition from uh, from other colleges. You know, A10 wasn't a, exactly a, the be the best conference, so you have some of the best teams in your conference, and you're battling against the best teams, and that kind of brings the exposure to the Xavier talent and quality that we have. And when we're able to go up against those guys and, and show them, you know, that we're the same, uh, it, it shows, and we're able to uh, put this program on exactly where it belongs in the top 25. What was it like for the Musketeers to be able to continue to carry over the A-10 success into the Big East? That's not always, that's a big step up in competition mm -hmm. a lot of times. And you really don't see them sustain it really the first couple of years. It takes a little bit to get used to it, but Xavier kept stride. Yeah, I think it was really about the culture that was built here at Xavier. I mean, you got a lot of, we talk about being Xavier guys, doing all the right things, uh, being disciplined, making sure that you're, not it's not it's not about you it's about the team and whatever the team needs for the moment you do that and uh, i think that kind of if you take that attitude every day that you're going to just seamlessly go through every game and have the same effort and that's why this uh, this program is where it's at right now coach lemming got his 100th victory how did that make you feel as one of his former players amazing amazing <laughs> it was so cool because I was there when he had zero wins, you know, and so to see him win 100 now is awesome, and I know he's going to win 100 more, and we're going to see continued success here. You were a defender. He's a big, big advocate of the back line. How, why is that position, or why are those positions so important in his system? Yeah, I mean, for for him, you 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 kind of grind out wins. Sometimes the, the soccer isn't going the right way, but it's about grinding out wins and having a, a strong back line and making sure that nothing gets past you. And so we might we might win games 1-0, you know, 2-1. You're not giving up anything. And he was always about if we if we don't give up as, uh, any goals or we give up one goal, we're giving ourselves a shot to win. And so that's what, uh, that's what he was looking for. Talk about this program and, and the way it's evolved here at Xavier. You've seen some improvements here on campus in the old O'Connor Sports Center, which was probably a little bit of your training room mm -hmm. out there in beautiful Schmidt Fieldhouse, That's which is right. a little bit old. But they're <laughs> going to they're going to make some renovations there, and I, yeah. I know you've been able to visit Cintas Center mm -hmm. and see some of the renovations there. What's that like to see it from an alumni perspective? Yeah, it's great. So I haven't been back on campus for four years now, and it's campus has changed so much. There's a new new apartments. There's uh you got. A uh, new academic building. You've got um, all the all the restaurants and whatnot. So it's cool, and to see that this is going to get renovated for these guys specifically, that they'll have a little bit of a home for for the Xavier soccer guys will be, and and all the Xavier athletes will be sweet. So Cincinnati FC now your home. What was it like when you got the news that you were going to be able to come home and play MLS here in Cincinnati? Amazing. Uh, you know, from afar and while I was in Toronto, the first uh, the first 
couple seasons in the USL, I was watching from afar, seeing on Twitter and stuff like that. And I was like, there's soccer in Cincinnati and it's buzzing and I'm not a part of it. And I'm kind of was like jealous about it. You know, I was like, I need to be a part of this. Um, and so when I got the call, I was ecstatic. I was ecstatic for my family. My daughter gets to be around her family. Uh, but ultimately to be able to play in front of my family and friends is uh, honestly such an honor. So you played some seasons in Nippert Stadium mm -hmm. at the University of Cincinnati and yeah, they're so right. happy to have you back here in Cincinnati <laughs> they're going to build you a brand new multi-million dollar stadium that's to start right. next year that's right uh not next year the following following year, year excuse yeah me. and uh yeah it's going to be great it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be in an awesome area which I'm really excited to see and they just built our Milford training facility and it looks beautiful state-of-the-art and so um all things are trending in the right direction so talk about what you're seeing here on the field to get the juices flowing to get back yes, in a little biggies competition it's a good old so biggies fun. matchup here tonight that's right I I remember the old Marquette battles. It was It's always a duel, you know. Uh, both are usually defensively sound, so to find a, an opportunity here um, is what we're looking for. Each team has had uh, two, two aha moments where they could have scored, uh, but uh, I think uh, Xavier here is going to force a turnover, and we're going to find the back of the net soon. Talk a little bit about the dimensions of this pitch. It's a little bit narrow, and Louis Bennett mentioned this. It's 70 yards wide, so it's about three yards shorter mm -hmm. or narrower. What does that help the defense on either side, or how does that change the game? Yeah, I think uh, when you make – it makes the spaces a bit tighter. You know, trying to play balls in between the lines gets a little bit harder. You know, if your pass isn't perfect, your defender's a little bit closer to you, so it's really emphasis on making those perfect passes. What do you think of your Musketeers so far here? I like it. I like it. You know, they're they're going to, again, Xavier is one that's going to grind it out. They've been sitting back looking on the counter. Every time they win on the counter, like something like this, uh, on the, unfortunately I fizzled out. But that's where they're going to find joy here. Um, you know, when, when Carson and Samson Sergi come connect, the space in behind the back line is huge. And that's where I think uh, Xavier will find it. They're trying to pinch him onto the sides, maybe get a turnover here, and then uh, – that's where they're they're gonna find help. Racing forward there, and there's another Musketeer. Solid defensive play out of the back, and Cameron Bell's gonna try to cycle it out here for Xavier. As Marquette keeps it alive. Did you have a chance to talk to the team before tonight's match? No, I actually talked to them uh, in the spring when they were during their spring season because those are one of the toughest seasons and kind of just uh, trying to remind them of what it was like when I was at Xavier and what the history was back then and what the history is now and to remind them, you know, like, we do this all together. The banners that these guys win are banners that I won and banners that I won are these guys because maybe I, if it, if I didn't play here, maybe these guys wouldn't play here, you know? So we're all connected in a certain way in the Xavier culture and so that they have a legacy and an opportunity to leave and, uh, yeah, I'm excited for these guys. They've started uh, the season well and I think it's going to continue. Even with your time away, were you able to follow the program? Did you keep up on it? Is there yeah, maybe some kind of secret group text you're in on and, and you can come on? Yeah, yeah, of course. We, te we, we, we text, uh, <laughs> text each other from my, my, my old group about, about what's going on with Xavier and what's, what's happening. So uh, I always text Andy on the beginning of the seasons and when they have big games against top 10 competition, you know, those are the biggest games that Xavier always shows up in. Um, and so I always try to make sure to send him a text, just a reminder. And the UC game, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> but John, which, you're playing which, over which there. Z which Xavier is blue again. Or, I mean, Cincinnati is blue yet again. Did you have to get used to playing in the UC stadium that often and being there to, to work out? Honestly, and to train we didn't play at Nipper. We played at <laughs> Gettler there. So we're the, I think uh, uh -huh. next to the parking garage. Yep. So it felt different than playing, you know, if it, playing at Nipper was a bit different. So we'll give you the Xavier alumni pass yeah, yeah, on that please. one. Yeah, please. All right. <laughs> There's a strike here for Marquette that fired wide. Nick Haglin, Musketeer, All-American here and about to be in the Xavier Hall of Fame. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Appreciate All right. having me. That's Nick Haglin of FC Cincinnati here visiting with us tonight. Great to see Nick back, and what a story for Nick Haglin out of Cincinnati from high school. Played college here, of course, with the Musketeers, and then Onto the MLS, the championship with Toronto FC, and now trying to build a franchise here in Cincinnati. Here's a cross, dangerous for Marquette. Follow-up strike well across the mark. And Marquette's opened up this second half with some significant pressure here on the Musketeers. So that tight Musketeer defense we talked about with Nick Haglin and such the important role that it plays in this system. A little bit under fire here to start this second 45. Matt Rosenberg going to send it away. Yeah. 
Battle for possession there in mid. That is Burnson gaining for the Musketeers and Sergi away. Sergi working on Chukai and a little bit of contact. Sergi perhaps tried to sell it and we play on in the Big East. Ball sent across, collected over there by Gabe Cash. Run started here for Segrist and Burnson up to greet him at mid. This is Purpa back to control. Good work to keep it alive there by Christian Albello. Restart here for the Musketeers. Out of the back, Ryan Bellavance. The transfer in from Colgate. Pressure forward there by the Musketeers, Kirsten Henderlong. And along a five goal scorer for Xavier, tied for the team lead, Big East lead with his teammate Samson Sergi. Two fairly well identical attackers in physical bill. Maybe a little more speed for Bellavance, but both with some excellent jump out front for the Musketeers and they can operate in space. Be a very dangerous 1v1 matchup for Jackson Wyman in net. Same could be said for the front line for Marquette, Luca Purpa. Out in front, Josh Cohen, Segrist. Multi-dimensional attack for both sides tonight. It has been fun. Segrist carries in here, working there with Cohen. Ball to the pitch and Cameron Bell, the midfielder, back to control. Excellent play in space is Salmeron. Able to hold it down at mid. Marquette continues possession. That mid for Purpa, big strike. And a two hopper right to the midsection. Uh, Matt Rosenberg for the Musketeers. So four shots to start this second half for Marquette. And that's more the style that Louis Bennett wants to play. Quick movement, straight ahead. Musketeers trying to form their first threat of the second. Had Samson Sergi out in front, but ridden off the ball. That was Xavier's drop, drop, deepest drop. penetration into the attacking third. Bellavance over for Bell and back for Wilson. Well, Wilson met out there, and a little contact as E.J. Franklin came across. Jacob Good all over to control here for Xavier. Restarts and set pieces, also a big concentration for Andy Fleming and his system. Albeit an extended opportunity, but a good chance here for the Musketeers. That ball is sent well wide over for Burnson. Chip forward, fired out by Albello. Wilson with the header and Bottom controls for the Musketeers. Run forming there. In front, it was cut off by Dumbler. Xavier trying to counter there with Autumn, and he's depossessed in mid by Purpa. Ball carried in for Cohen. Wide for Segrist. Slot challenger for Bellavance, and Seegers able to press forward. Cohen again, sent across far post in the air, and that ball headed right to Rosenberg. Good thought and an aggressive play for Marquette. So they try to get A.J. Franklin up into the air. Franklin a huge target at 6-3. Didn't get a lot of contact on it, but pretty good redirection out of the air and some nice lift for A.J. Franklin.
So Marquette with pace. Continuing early in the second. Chukai looks for an opportunity out of the back for Marquette. Across for Cash, now forward for Salmara. Purpa up to greet it and a Golden Eagle down and maybe Salmara after some contact. And a fairly clean game here so far in terms of fouls. Three for the Musketeers in the first nine for Marquette. We'll take a look there. I think it was anything intentional there by Derek Odom. Restart for Cash. Tosses it into the box. Bellavance there for the Musketeers to head away. Wilson trying to clear. Chukai battling forward for Marquette. Ball deflected out and it'll go to Xavier. Musketeers an excellent job to clog the box. No shooting lane there for Manuel Chukai. Chukai from Mannheim, Germany. We mentioned Sweden represented on this roster here for the Marquette Golden Eagles. England, Italy. So Louis Bennett says sometimes some of that foreign talent will come and find him and sometimes he'll go look across the pond for a specific role. Has an approach to his recruiting where he says, if I'm looking north and south for a certain style of player, I have another on my staff looking east and west just to cover. And Louis Bennett, an Englishman, has a couple of folks in Great Britain on the scouting trail. Alert him, they see something that'll fit his system. Bennett with a little different system here in the Big East, but says it helps him attract the talent. That's how he got a guy like Luca Purpa, how he got a guy like Cohen to transfer over from Pittsburgh and out of the ACC into the Big East. Again, Louis Bennett really enjoying his time here at Marquette in his 14th season. Got a restart here in mid. They'll sort it out here with Kahari Williams, the alternative official on the near touch. Ball sent across, and this is Dumbler controlling for the Musketeers. Dumbler cycles back. He's out of Egan, Minnesota, St. Thomas Academy. Back for Wilson. Big boot forward for Goodall. They find Cameron Bell. Bell with some excellent technical build. He sends it across. Miss Sergi streaking down the center of the box. Ball will trickle into the corner, and Xavier will come up with a throw in in the attacking third. Lucas Sunasa, the Swede set to check back in. Shots in the first. For Marquette, Cohen had two, Alba had two, and a goal there for the Musketeers. Xavier picks up the second goal of the night. And the Musketeers finally crack Jackson Wyman. Get a good look at the reset here for the Musketeers as the ball came in off a throw in another restart opportunity here for Xavier. Ball into the air, chipped, and right place, right time. That is Taylor Crow delivering for Xavier. So the ball headed in Crawl's direction, and he's there to clean it up. It's Crawl's first Xavier of the Crawl season. We'll call it at 30-43 for Taylor Crawl. We'll see it again as. Contact in the air. Maybe Samson Sergi got a piece of it there for the Musketeers, and Crawl sends it top shelf, and the Musketeers strike first. 1 0 at 30 34 for Taylor Crawl. We'll see if they credit an assist. So Xavier 
After seeing Marquette come out on a surge to start this second half, able to answer on a throw-in. Placement so important on those throw-ins. Musketeers lost an expert in that category. Cameron Taylor to graduation. And the first goal of the night goes to the Musketeers and an unlikely candidate, Taylor Crawl. Carl Richard, sophomore defenseman. They love those big targets on those crossing opportunities. And Taylor Crawl picked it up for the Musketeers. 6'1, 180. But now Marquette looks for the equalizer. Odom in space and some contact is storming in from behind was Alex Samaran and Odom gonna need a little extra time to shake that off. So 30-34 the second half, that's 59-24 to match. Crawl sends it out of the back, long ball. Burns in there for the Musketeers and then ridden off with a nice chip from Gabe Cash. Well played Biggie's battle here tonight. And now we're looking for the counter punch for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Seeger streams in. Bell extinguishes his strike. Ball sent in and off as it was deflected into the corner. That'll swing possession back to the Musketeers. So it takes the Musketeers to the 60th minute to register against Marquette. Attack there for the Golden Eagles denied, but Purpa able to save it. In space, Salmaran. Left footer there for Segrist, chipped out by Goodall. Singers had some series bend on that service through the box. Salmaran. Back across the mid to Albello. Solid challenge there by Carson Henderlong, and Henderlong whistled for the foul. Marquette with a quick restart. Bellavance rockets it out of the back, and some relief for the Musketeers. So Marquette's been able to counter. Purpe in space, depossessed. Here's Wilson for the Musketeers at mid. Chip back from Henderlong. Segrist with a good angle here for the Golden Eagles and he'll get tangled up with Cameron Bell. And a little extracurriculars here at the near touch. Throw in here for the Musketeers. Get a look at your players of the week here. Dylan Nealis for the Georgetown Hoyas. And the Red Storms, Nico Pedritis. Pedritis had a huge game against the Musketeers. Two game winners in the week. Three goals, two assists over two games. And Nealis on the defensive side, as you might expect out of the top five ranked Georgetown Hoyas. Good ball sent across. Bernson going to track it down in space. Cash with an aggressive mark there for the Golden Eagles, and it's going to turn into a possession. Got a little help there from 
Luca Cardamone. Good ball forward here. Chance for Cohen in space. Cohen, good work. Cohen finds the net, far post. Beautiful technical move for Cohen. And he slides it past Matt Rosenberg. And we are even at one, so the quick answer from the Marquette Golden Eagles. Josh Cohen delivers. Great look at the change of direction. Good old caught in between moves and a beautiful placement there for Cohen. The transfer from Pittsburgh able to ring one up for the Golden Eagles. And Cohen comes up with his fourth of the campaign. Beautiful work and a well needed answer there for Louis Bennett. And his Marquette Golden Eagles. So Cohen delivers. Merzberger going to come back on now for the Golden Eagles as Gabe Cash will get a rest. Cash did some excellent work defensively and really gained that possession deep in his defensive third. And that turned into the opportunity there for Cohen. So all level. Once again, here in Cincinnati. Shots now 12-8 in favor of Marquette. Musketeers trying to manufacture a quick answer. Connor Haskell gets it down across the goal line. Merzberger was there defensively, so some fresh legs for Louis Bennett and the Golden Eagles on the defensive backfield. Segrist forward for Christian Marquez. Marquez had his first goal of the season against Wisconsin in the previous match for Marquette. And we'll try Marquez again. Marquez attacking direct. Ball flicked away there by Odom and that allows Xavier to reset. Dubler over there defensively for the Musketeers. Crawl gonna rip it out, collected before it hits midfield by Chukai. Excellent service across for Merzberger. It's a turn in space over there for A.J. Franklin. Quick movement around the perimeter here. Ball served forward. Rosenberg going to be able to clean it up. You saw a little frustration right in the box there from Marquette's Alec Lucas Sunasan. And Sunasan trying to say, serve that low. Give it to me on the pitch. Let me do something with it instead of having to try to run under it. Give Rosenberg a great view of it as it floated very high to Rosenberg's hands. Come on, quicker, 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 quicker. Louis Bennett asked for pace. Misconnection here on the near side. Segrist, a little powerful, heavy service there from Albello. Derek got him controls. Musketeers will try to play out of the back with the veteran Jacob Goodall. Kroll, the goal scorer for the Musketeers with the touch. As Marquette starts to press forward. The speedy Dumbler on the far side. Merzberger over there to Mark. Ball kept in play, then sent across the touchline. A little relief. Hey, and there's that unsung there. solid play there by Salmeron. Hey, Jay. Set Come piece on, now Jay. for the Musketeers, and this is the same scenario on which the Musketeers were able to score their first goal. Cameron Bell will try to place hey, another strong throw in. Better contact there on the first ball for Marquette as Chukai sends it out. The Musketeers will try it again. See Cameron okay. Bell with a long lead build okay. at 5 9. Ball again chipped across, and again a dangerous chance in front. 
That time denied. Baffo was there for Xavier. Could turn into a chance forward here for Marquette. Sunasad got into a double team and a little bit of a chip on his shoulder from Jacob Goodall. So Musketeers closed in defensively. Ryan Bellavance also over there defensively for Xavier. Get a great look at Goodall. Maybe Goodall realized that this was going to be an excellent opportunity there for Sunasan. See Sunasan trying to get into space and a little contact just high there from Jacob Goodall. And that'll be a reset and a set piece opportunity here for the Golden Eagles. Coming over at Christian Albello. Albello's service to the far side. Ball knocked away by Goodall. Excellent service in as that ball sinking down towards the center of the box. Great play on the far side there and an excellent turn for Grant Dumbler and the Musketeers. Dumbler sets up Baffo wide and Baffo going to be offside. And that'll swing it back to Marquette. How about the play for Dumbler? Segrist, soft service four. Connection here with Marquez. Marquez getting all kinds of attention there from Crawl, who got a big foot out. Sends it back to mid. Merzberger far side. Center for Salmara. Back for Merzberger. Mark for Haskell. Good all. Chucks it into the air. Bellavance contact. Segris saw an opportunity but unable to get a full boot on it. And that one ricochets across the goal line. Musketeers going to bring Carson Henderlong in for Sampson Sergi. So five goal score. Exchange for five goal scores. And Sergi. Get a much needed rest. So he played all 71 minutes so far tonight. Andy Fleming trying to refresh his dangerous score for a push late, perhaps. Musketeers will be happy to take the result here tonight, but would love to get points at home. So vital to any championship run or any type of postseason case you can make. Have to hold here at the home pitch. Via cycling out of the back four run kick. Segrist. Touch back for Albello in space. He'll reverse pitch, Dumbler there to chip out. Segrist for Sunasa. Albello will try Segrist again. Good low service across and just a couple steps behind was Salmara. Chukai controls the Musketeer clearance. Musketeers aggressively pressing forward and some young talent out front with Henderlong and Bafo, the freshman. Marquez Segrist across and just over to make the play. A little bit of traffic is streaking past that near post and almost with some contact there for Marquette with Sunasa. Gorgeous deliberate service in from the corner from Segrist. So one all here after a scoreless first half. At 59-20, the Musketeer strength with Taylor Crawl, a defenseman, his first of the season. They gave an assist there to Cameron Bell, who had the throw in out of the far corner. And then a quick answer for Marquette at 64-45. Josh Cohen put in his third of the campaign, and that contact 
And a defensive third for Xavier as Mersberger hit the pitch and Xavier holds strong on that far side. Put Jacob Burson. So now Rosenberg clears as the Musketeers firmly with numbers forward. Hender Long, ball chipped forward and Jackson Wyman able to make a great play. Now trying to start transition. Cameron Bell out to cut off Segrist. A little hand there from the Musketeer bench. Musketeers bring Chase Weppard on Mark for Ryan Bellavance and Weber. Another young talent for the Musketeers, a freshman out of Ryerstown, Maryland. Zach Wigner out of the pitch. A redshirt sophomore midfield from Heartland, Wisconsin. It's his first minutes of the night here for Marquette. After a scoreless first, two quick goals here in the second and kudos to the Marquette Golden Eagles for a quick answer. Of an opportunistic Musketeer chance. Taylor Crawl picked up an errant header on the far post and able to knock it past Jackson Wyman. And now Matt Rosenberg to clear here for the Musketeers. 75th minute. In space, another good run forward for Salmoran. Across here for Marquez. Bell over to provide a defense for the Musketeers, and as he's turned, he's fouled. So Xavier able to relieve. Good look there at Cameron Bell for the Musketeers. Bell with an assist so far this season. Bell really reminiscent physically of Luke Spencer. Had some great years here in the Atlantic 10 for the Musketeers. Lanky presence, pretty good physical build and a lot of speed. Wagner presses the issue for Marquette. Now they'll play it out of the middle third. Chukai across. Mersberger the touch. Aggressive start of the turn here for Alba. Sends Mersberger into the goal line. Mersberger able to cross and a goal! Quick strike again for Marquette. And right on the doorstep of a beautiful service, Christian Marquez picks up his second of the season. And the Golden Eagles have a 2-1 advantage in the 76th in Cincinnati. What a service by Mersberger off the goal line. Sent it right across at perfect timing for Christian Marquez who scored for the second straight match for the Golden Eagles. Look at the service guided through traffic and beautiful work by Marquez. Mersberger goes low and Marquez Right on the doorstep as Rosenberg made an aggressive play towards the post. And you saw Sunasan there as well for Marquette. Almost had a chance to chip it in. And as Rosenberg went over to defend, Attic had passed him. And Christian Marquez with a wide open chance. And he put it away for Louis Bennett and Marquette. So a one goal lead for the Golden Eagles. Now a six shot advantage for Marquette. Marquette's put four on frame, the Musketeers three. And the shot's now at 14-8. 
All three goals in this match in the second half. For the Musketeers, Taylor Crawl, the defenseman. Marquez with a strike. And a dangerous chance turned away there by Wyman. Big blast from distance. Turned into a Musketeer corner. Good work by Wyman to get the frame up in the air. 6-1. Good all over to take the corner now for the Musketeers. Just a direct strike there from Autumn trying to guide one in. Perhaps catch Marquette a little bit off guard, but Wyman there to deliver. Now Xavier looks for the quick answer. Left footed from Goodall looking for Sergi, and Sergi made contact in the air, but that ball fell easily to Wyman. A little slow to get up there, Merzberger, but he'll be able to continue. So Goodall looking for the big veteran target, Samson Sergi. The two dangerous chances, one eight. Direct kick from Derek Autumn, almost bent underneath the crossbar, and Samson Sergi, perhaps an inch or two away, it's from some better contact that would have leveled this match at two. Marquette substitution now. We were in our 77th minute. Cohen back out. He picked up a goal here in the second. Marquez the other strike. And Marquez right now, if it holds, be credited with the game winner. This is a portion of the game and he Scenario where Louis Bennett will continue to attack with his Golden Eagles. Talked about holding possession. He says teams like to hold possession, hold possession. You can hold and win 90% of the possession, but if the other team scores in the other 10% of that possession, you get the chance to lose. So Louis Bennett has developed a philosophy to continue to attack throughout the 90 minutes. And Marquette opened up this second half with some notable increased pace, able to generate some opportunities and have turned it into two goals. Cameron Bell trying to press the issue for the Musketeers. Segrist with a beautiful ball. And that ball chipped forward by Cohen. Cohen's service wide. Salmoran there. He works in space against Wilson. 77th minute. Seekers to cross. Crawl there for Xavier. Sunasan there to depossess. Sunasan will have a chance, and that one rings the crossbar. Beautiful play by Lucas Sunasan, the Swede in space. Looking to put the Musketeers away. Quick turn for Sunasan, half a step and a rip off the crossbar. A great strike, unrewarded there for the Golden Eagles. Get a good look at the cross there by Segrist. Little trouble there for Taylor Crawl and almost bent that inside the brace. Marquette back to the attack. Merzberger lost his feet. And Xavier scrambling there out of the back with Goodall to get a foot on it and gain some relief. So a touted Musketeer back line and once again the Musketeers holding an opponent scoreless in the first half but surrendering two here in the second. Xavier has been outscored now in the second half, 10 to six this season. Oh, 
So some adjustments there for Louis Bennett. So Marquette tried to steer it through a clogged midfield in the opening 45 and have found their stride in their brand of play here in the second. Sixty-four, forty-five. Josh Cohen, his third. That a solo going, and it's seventy-six, thirty-seven. A beautiful play by Marquez. Off a purposeful cross from Alex Mersberger. Sergey in space, trying to set up Bafo. Big play and some nice grit there from Salmarai, but that's going to draw the whistle. And Louis Bennett a bit unhappy here as this is going to give Xavier a chance for a kick. It's a couple of yards outside the box. So the Musketeers a dangerous chance here to level his time ticking down in a second. See that ball into the air and Vafo turned around as almost if he got the whistle. And we saw Autumn try to bend one in from the far touch. He will yield this time to Jacob Goodall. The Musketeers trying to level the match. Goodall to the far post and nobody home for Xavier. Burnson streaking through there. Did not get there in time and well placed ball. Just a couple of feet outside that post and sinking. So the Musketeers would have had an excellent chance should they have had somebody in the area. Ball played out by Merzberger in space. Luca Purpa. Touched across. Restart here for Marquette. Perhaps a little less pace here to the Golden Eagle attack as they try to grind out this final five minutes and 14 seconds. Big run forward for the powerful Sunasan. Crossed in front. Taken away there by Crawl that time and then a turnover. As soon as that again powers forward. So you were able to get a foot on it there with Dumbler. Now Segrist keeps it alive for Marquette in the attacking third. Across for Cohen. He has one already tonight. Marked by Bafo. Ball sent across. Sunasan tried to get there. Good all got the first touch. Ball sent right back in. Sunasan in front. Can he get that one away? And it's well high. Marquette. Pouring on the offensive pressure here. And the Musketeers able to steer that one away. See the consistent pressure there. And a great decision there by Purpa to try to get it over to Sunasat, who was on the doorstep. And he hit two pretty good looks at it. The second boot sent it well over the crossbar. We'll say it was off the Musketeers. And now Luca Purpa will serve it up from the corner. Third corner tonight for Marquette, and Louis Ben will be just happy with that. As you see, Marquette has changed the terms of play here in the second. Good left boot ball up in the air, and some contact up there. Almost a chance for Chukai. That ball fell well short, and Rosenberg able to pounce. Forward pressure here by Sunasan, and he had a big blast and a big collision out of the back on Burnson. And there was some contact forward on Sampson Sergi as well. So the clock continues to run now less than four minutes, and you'll see Sunasan putting it on Burnson. Welcome to the second match of Big East play, my friend. Sunasan, a large upper body at 5'11". 175. See our clock is stopped here with 3.54 remaining and that's one of the changes here in 
Division I men's soccer as time will not continue to wind down as we sort out some situations in Louis Bennett and an animated conversation here on the near side. Mark Gorick is our lead official. Gary Culbertson, Kyle Most also on the pitch and Kahari Williams, the alternate. Louis Bennett has made his case and will be quickly back to the play. 354 remaining here in Marquette with strikes at 64, 45, and 76, 37. Trying to continue a second half roll. And Samson Sergi almost with a chance in space. Well done by Chukai. And then to track it down and fire it out, Segrist. Crawl to the middle. Burson knocked it down. Wegner sent it back. Going forward. Crawl there for the Musketeers. And again, pressing the issue. Lucas Sunasat. He has been a presence in front of the Xavier keeper Rosenberg tonight. Musketeers trying to regain some flow to their play out of the back and forward pressure making it difficult. Luca Purpa there for the Golden Eagles. Here's Burson. Forward for Henderlong. Forward now for Sergi. Sergi trying to get into the box. A little bit of a grab and Sergi got to the goal line. Made contact with the right side of the net. We'll play on. It was Leo Villa there defensively for Marquette. And Louis Bennett looking at Kahari Williams, our alternate official, with the repeated question, really? So a chance turned away there for Xavier, and the Musketeers now with a sense of urgency. Out of the back. Eighty-ninth minute now. Musketeers trying for a late answer. Marquette is taking control here with pace in the second. We went to the half scoreless. It was all tied up at shots on goal, seven to two. Seven shots total for each team, two on. And now Marquette has taken a five-shot lead here in the second. With 16, they place five on frame. The Musketeers have 12 shots. They also have five on. Long clearance out. Clock will continue to wind. Musketeers recognize, and Taylor Crow now gets a quick whistle, and they'll stop it with a minute 10 to go. Ball played forward. Henderlong there for the Musketeers and solid defense on a double team by Chukai and Segrist. 90th minute and the Musketeers with a late chance. Can they convert on the corner? So be Xavier's second corner of the night. Time winding here. And the Musketeers try and force some late drama. Service to the far side ball. He's punched out of there. Nicely done with the header by Leo Villa. Sent back on. Musketeers trying to manufacture a chance. Crawl is there. Can't get to it. Sunasan trying to carry out. Odom with a, some speed will guide it back to Matt Rosenberg. And now the Musketeers down to 16 seconds. Ball forward. Bafo ridden off nicely by Leo Villa. Ball will go to Jackson Wyman. And the Marquette Golden Eagles will seal it here in Cincinnati. Marquette with its second consecutive victory on the campaign. They'll move to four, three and one, and one and one here in Big East play. And the Musketeers drop one here at home, a rarity for Xavier. And the Musketeers now four, three and one, oh, two and one 
in Big East Conference play. We'll take a break and we'll be back with more here at the Xavier Pitch. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. It's just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. It's just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Mike Schmaltz back in the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi here in Cincinnati, the Xavier Soccer Complex, and we're joined by Christian Marquez, the Marquette Golden Eagles, a 2-1 winner over the Xavier Musketeers here this evening. Talk about the difference in your team's play between the first half and the second half. Xavier really clogged the middle on you in the first half. You were able to really change the tone with your pace of play in the second. 
what you talk about maybe at halftime that you're allowed to make those adjustments? Yeah, yeah. So at halftime, our coach told us that we can't get in. We can't bring him through the middle, so we try to make create and make space on the out wide. So that's how our first goal and our second goal came through out wide, out wide play. You feel that attacking momentum as you started to gain some traction in the second half? Oh, of course. We started getting comfortable with the ball and started stealing territory into, theirs, into their own half, and then we started to pin them back, and, and we started playing, and we found in the two breakaways. You're a freshman. You got the game winner at Wisconsin in the previous match. You get the game winner here tonight. Just talk about the play. It was a beautiful service across from Merzberger. It came in low, and what did you see when you were able to put it in? I just uh, – I just – Found the correct space. I knew the ball was going to come into the box, but I had to make the decision to either run into the box, top, either going into the top of the box or going in right there. And I found that, that space, that correct space right there. Is that something that you guys practice in terms of spacing for those plays? Are you running to a spot, or do you, do you think that that's going to Oh, yeah, come we definitely there? practice that throughout the week. So we definitely have one runner into the box, or three runners and distinct places into the box. So we always have practice that throughout the week. So talk about just your feelings on two straight game winners for your team in your freshman season. <laughs> it's an incredible feeling, to be honest. To, to see the field, at least, and then to get the two game winners, it's awesome. How important was it for you to level the conference slate here with a big road victory against the Musketeers? It's really important for us to, to gain momentum into the next few games, out of conference games and in conference games. That's Christian Marquez. He comes up with a game winner in the 77th minute for the Marquette Golden Eagles, and they take a big 2-1 victory over the Musketeers here on the road here tonight. So your final score again from Cincinnati, the, the Marquette Golden Eagles knock off the Xavier Musketeers two to one. Marquette moves to one and one in conference play and the Musketeers to zero oh and two. So for our Big East Digital Network crew and Ryan McGahey, I'm Mike Schmaltz. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for men's soccer on the Big East Digital Network.